Good morning, Rab Boisai. Ah, so Mark Meisler, who won the fifty dollars in the first challenge, reinvested his money back into this challenge, and here goes the winner for today. I think there's like 198 entries, 133 entries, I don't remember anymore. Avi, this is his email. No, it's not. It's A.L. Sheps. Avi L. Sheps. All right, beautiful. I just wanted to quickly share sometimes when you make an effort to learn, people around you notice, I'm sharing a photo of my coworker captured of me learning in my downtime in a shop here in Calgary, Calgary, Alberta. I'm also including a quick video of my son, Roe, who chose none other than Rebellion for his school's favorite person from Jewish Current History Day. Oh, that I didn't get. It goes to show you how much effort and effort at home pays off with being mechanach a child, sincerely a Canadian mechanic, Idan Moshkovitz. I have been listening this year since Yivumis Daf Beis. Though I do have a Daf Yomi Chavrusa, I always try to make time to listen to these shir as well for great chazar and additional clarity. Unfortunately, last week or so, I was very busy and I passed on the shir. I just got back on Tuesday and was surprised to learn about the new Arve Psachim Chazara. I love the idea. So right away, checked the MDY website to sign up. I found no info about it. The kid, so he wants to know how he could get on the bandwagon and if he still could. Thanks. A proud MDY chusid from Muncie. The answer is yes. You could always get on. You can do four daf a day and finish in no time. Rebelli, what? mdychazara.com mdychazara.com and also don't forget Yosef, did you put on the bottom when I said the whole thing about Saita? You put join daf vad join dafyoimi.com join dafyoimi.com for Saita. People are asking how come the Vesemesh was very empty yesterday because it was raining. So how come today? It's a good Shiloh. Because yesterday was raining. Rebelli, the Indianapolis Hever Kedisha cleans only the outside of the maze, not the inside. Never heard of cleaning the inside. So we said, only in Eretz Yisrael they clean the inside. Rebelli, Biz 120, Rick Bentley, Indianapolis. I'm, I'm, I'm reading it because it's in Indianapolis. I have a special Ahavat to Indianapolis. First big deal. What? First big deal. No, why? Jonathan, why? Still have property there. Hello, everybody, Stefanski. I don't want to take too much of your time from the Oilom, so I'll be brief. It says in the Brachas Dav Zayin that the Bracha of a Hedyid should be not be Kalbeinecha. So I wanted to give you a Bracha. They should continue to grow in your ability to give over the Dav, and Hashem should open up your mind to absorb the information as you learn it and always put the right words in your mouth. I need that Bracha, especially. Or, and, and Mendy would say in the right videos in your shiurim, especially when you're on the well-deserved vacations, and I, I and the entire MDY community shall be zoyed to finish shas with you many times over. As a small side note, my daughter used to love listening to the shiurim with me in the cars. I would take her to the sibling school. But recently, since she's heard the song, it's not about the daf, she's been asking to hear that instead. Nice job, Ravi Seltzer. Here's a video of her and her younger sister. Notice how she trained my youngest to say ah, for the good morning, Raboy says sincerely, Yonatan Amzalig, Los Angeles. Very cute stuff. Here we go. One, two, three. Good morning, Raboy. And here's another very cute one. Thank you for all the hard work and everything you give and share every day in the Gishmak. One of the things while learning the dive every day attracted my nephew, as you can see on the video tash. I only wish you much at Slacha, Shabbat to keep on going. Best regards from Ellie Goldschmidt. Monty, what does, what does Ellie say? Tell me what Ellie says. Good morning, I'll say, ah! <laughs> what else does Ellie say? Shmak to do the daf. And uh, this Sadiq pointed out that yesterday I missed a very important thing, that Yoshi added tchelis to the maze. If you look closely, he has tchelis there. <laughs> Koilo. Anonymous from Lakewood, the Koyal sponsored for the month in honor of my daughter, Eliza, becoming Kalat, Svichayim Nadov from Toronto, Mazel Tov. The Mesechta sponsored by Meiser, the second sponsor of the Mesechta, the Nishmas Chayabas Yosef by Anonymous. Paris Achoydish, we're back to five again. How did that happen? 
the Nishmas Moshe bin Yehuda by his community. The second sponsor, anonymous from Flappers, for continue bracha, mazel, and clarity. By the Landy family, Lili Nishmas Yisrael Chaim bin Yishayo, Lili Nishmas Chaim Elephant, Chaim bin Yaakov Shmuel, Zuchon and Levracha by his West Side friends. And Lili Nishmas Zechariah ben Moshe. That's a new one, no? He's back. I need to stay behind. Whatever. Today's daf is being sponsored by by the Klagsbrun grandchildren. Klagsbrun grandchildren. Lili Nishmas Shlam is Baz Rabbi Shaya, and by Michael Segelstein in honor of my wife Shoshana on her birthday. Chav Beis Adar Admeiv Esrim Shana Amen. The art. Nobody came forward yet. Anybody want to sponsor a full month? It's only five thousand dollars for a full month of Yoshi art. As you can see, the last few days that haven't been so sponsored are a little schwach. A boy side, here we go. We're holding Daf Nun Aleph, Omud Beis. Nun Aleph is obviously 50 Daf into Masechus Nazir. Bring your friends. Did you do anything yet? Anybody? Anybody bring people? You can be. There's people that used to stand in Osharad Osh- and just bring randoms. Some of you here are from the, that guy in Osharad who brought you. Randoms. Boy Rava. Daf Nunalif on Bays all the way in the bottom. The boy say, if you eat an insect like an ant, how many lavim are you over? Anybody? Anybody with the right answer? Five. Five lavim. There's a special halacha of Moshe Messina that tells us that an ant, even though typically when you eat achilas, how much is usually achila? Kezayis. You don't need a kezayis of an ant. It could be much less than a kezayis. If it's a bria. A bria is a whole being. So what happens if you have an ant and this is, oh, uh, I'll, maybe I'll jump there first. Here we go. If you have an ant, here it is. We can, oh, this is it for the whole day today because he's not sponsored, so he's a little braggish. This is an ant that's missing one leg. He has a peg instead of a leg. If you, he eat one of those. It's a bria, but the bria is missing a leg. Shira Gmir in law. You saw, you saw what he had, a patch on his eyes, an MDY patch. You have to look at all the detail. Okay. Shira Gmir in law. The Torah, the Allah of the Messina says it has to be a bria. It has to be a whole being with the six legs, two antennas, everything. It's missing one part, even though it can live without that part. It's not a bria. Or at the end of the day, you have a living being. And that's all the Torah says, it's a living being. What's worse than finding a worm in your salad? <laughs> finding half a worm in your salad. <laughs> he calms down after five minutes, don't worry about it. I'll go say later. Omer Rav Yehuda Midiskarto, top of Nun Beis Omed Aleph. Tashma. So again, the Shaila is you have a, an ant that's missing part of its body; it's still alive. Is it considered a brio? It says by Shratim Bohem. Kolani Gea Bohem b'Moisam Yitma Adarv Pasuk Lamed Aleph. The following pasuk: V'Cholash Yipol Olav Mayhem b'Moisam Yitma. Bohem mayhem. Bohem means in all of it. Mayhem, anybody speaks Slash and Kaidish? Mayhem is from. From it means even some of it. So we have a little bit of a contradiction here. Bohem yachabakulon. Maybe in order to be tummy. So again, just to, sometimes it's not 100% clear. You have the Shemone what, what, What's the Shemone So, Every animal that we know of, when it dies, basically, almost every animal, emits tumma, a horse, a cat, a dog. 
But the smaller animals, the shrotzim, some of them have tumor, some of them don't. For instance, a snake could be a large python, a cobra, whatever you want. It's not matama. An anaconda, I don't know what. It could be 400 pounds, dead. And you touch it, you don't t- you're not telling me why. Because it's not one of the Shemayna Shratzim. You have a smaller cat, it is Tomei. It doesn't go by size, it goes by the... So Sheretz is a creeping animal. So you have, if it's a, a rat, uh, a, a, what is it, a lizard, a, 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 a toad, those are one of the Shemayna Shratzim that are Metama. So it says in the Pasuk, Bohem, Yochel Bekulon. Maybe I have to grab the whole entire rat even a part of the rat, a part of the chaymet, the snail, also. Maybe, a, so which one is it? Maybe the finger of a, of a rat, that's all I need to touch. I found the finger in the, in the driveway, touch it, I'm, 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 I'm Tommy. No, it can't be. It has to be the whole thing. Okay, so which one is it? Is it part of, of the rat or the whole rat? Okay. So we learn from here, from this contradiction, we have to resolve the contradiction. So you look on the bottom of that chart, I put two lentils there just for lasabir, so it's not, not the size, but a lentil, we know, like a bean. Chacham decided, they took, I guess, the smallest one in the, in the list, which is a snail. Most hold it's a snail. And they said that, when a snail is, is born, comes out of its shell, it comes out b'chadasha. That's the shear. So therefore, if you touch, is a, we're not going to another type of shear. We're not, not in a kezayis anymore. We're not in a revis. We're in a chadasha, like a lentil. Okay? Lentil is smaller than a kezayis. <coughs> kadasha. Why? Because the smallest sheretz is born the size of a kadasha. So that's what the Torah is saying. Mayhem bohem. It has to be a whole thing, a whole lentil, but mayhem from the smallest of the of, of these of these uh, shrouds. So Mashiach Chacham Gadash. Okay, now Chaimet. Chilas Biyase. Whatever Chaimet is, when Mashiach comes to know exactly, let's let's just call it a snail for now. Some say it's a lizard. Whatever it is, but it's one of these things. Chaimet. Chilas Biyase Chadash. You go whatever it is, wherever you find it. I don't know where you find it exactly. The snails everywhere. It has to be a chadasha. Shema mino, so l'chayra, you can learn from here, shiru gemiri, gemiri la. What if I took, I went in, there's an egg of a, of a snail, and with a, a tool, I went in there, and I grabbed two of its, whatever, its tail, half of its tail I broke off. I, so now I have less than a chadasha. So you see that you need a shear, you need a kadash. It doesn't help me if I, if I take off parts. No, it has to be a kadash. The midlaw, you have a kadash, let me tama. So, sorry. Shmana shiru gemir lo. Omer shmaya, what's the raya? Kibin and shiro. The midlaw, you have a kadash, let me tama. When do I say if it's not a adash, it doesn't emit tuma? The loy nof lo shama. Basically, he's saying a very interesting thing here. He's saying, the fact is that a snail won't be born if it's less than a dasha. If you surgically remove part of its body within the, the shell, it won't be born. It cannot, you cannot insert an ashama soul into this creature if it's less than a kadasha. That's how it works. Once you have a living creature, you have an ant, and you remove legs, it's going to continue to live. Why wouldn't it live with five legs? It has five legs. It can maneuver, it can do anything. So may I don't have a raya from here whether the shear is a kadasha. Does it have to be a full thing or I could even remove a varm or not? So again, a few questions that we have today, we're not going to be resolved at all. Next sugya, brand new sugya. Hashidra v'agogoylas. You have the spine and the skull. Yiboylo. We took it for granted. Again, let's, let's go back one second over here. 
all the way back to the Mishnah. Here, this is the Mishnah. It's a list of 10 things. The Mishnah says that a Nazir who comes in contact with these 10 things, he must shave his head. He must start all over again. A whole mace, we decided what a whole mace probably means, a fetus, a kezais of a mace, kezais netzel, you have the, the liquid that congealed. Yesterday we were discussing the, the rekev, the, the dust of the corpse, shidra, the spine, gulgoilas. Now we're discussing these two. We want to know, is it both of them together or it's one or the other? Okay, we keep on going. Aver, a limb from a dead person, a live person, which is double the regular shear because he's a Nazar, he needs more bones to become Tomei. Which is also double the shear because usually you need a Revi'ez Dam, blood, Rekev, all these things make a Nazar Tomei. And Etzim Kesaira, one bone the size of a of barley. Now, from this entire list, Rabbi Boisai, everything on this list, I'm telling you right now, everything on this list, makes a person tame b'oyel. If you have a half a look of blood in a, in a cup, and somebody walks into that entire room, he becomes tame. There's one thing on this list that does not make a person tame b'oyel. What, what is it? Etzim kisaira, the last, last, final thing on the list. That's it. Nine out of 10 here, they're all metama b'oyel, besides etzim kisaira. Makes a lot of sense if you think about it. You have a gulgoilas, which is more than a soira, more than a piece of barley. You have a shidra. You have all these things. How does chatzikavat tzomis make any sense? Chatzikav is hundreds of kisairas. So what's etzim kisaira? Because etzim kisaira, I'm talking about one little barley is matam if you touch it. Bimago or bimasa if you lift. Okay. It says Gemara like this. Hashidra gulgoilas. So going to, to, to number five and six. Is it the two of them together? When I was learning the Mishnah and the way I explained it when we were learning, it's either or. At the end of the day, we don't really know. If you take off the ribs, when we're explaining the, the Mishnah also, the, the, the spine is connected to the ribs. The ribs are connected to the spine. So if you remove the, the, most of the ribs, it's tar. Well, if you go into Tysus for a second, you'll see that Tysus says, if most of the ribs were broken on both sides, that's one halacha. Removed, most of the ribs is on one side. A huge nafkamina says Tysus between broken and removed. Broken, you need rib of both sides. Removed, rib of only one side. Okay, not the not important for now. Uba kever, the special halacha that tells you that a grave combines everything in it. Afilu mishuberes and mifurek is broken and disassembled. Tmeya, revenish kever because the kever you pretend that's all connected. But the gemara infers from here. Taima mishum degirit. It's because these bones are removed from the spine. It says the reason why it's tahar is because the ribs are not attached to the spine. So I can infer from here that if the ribs are attached to the spine, it does make you tame. In other words, shmamina, oi shidra, oi gulgailas. It's either or. Again, it says if you have a spine that doesn't have any bones attached to it, you have this spine without these guys. I entice is exactly what it means without these guys, but the point is some of these guys are missing. Then if another touches the spine or the spine is not metama now. There's no mention here about a skull. It says spine without these guys, no toma. Mash my spine with these guys, yes tome. And it doesn't say anything about a skull. So it's mash you don't need a skull. So this is a teretz that you don't really see throughout Chas. We had it yesterday. We have it a few times. Interesting kind of tarot. Holy Katani. Holy Katani. Hakam Ashvalon. There's no inferring here. I told you one halacha. Don't infer. Usually we, we make a deal. You said it like this. It's mashmalon. The other thing, no. Ha, like Katani. 
It doesn't, you don't use the, the, the ha, infer. That we didn't say. We're not talking about inferring now. I just told you one halacha. I told you that halacha that if the, the ribs are removed, broken on two sides, removed from one side, not tummy. What happens when they're attached? That I didn't tell you. That you figure out yourself. In other words, I don't know the answer. I'm stuck. I myself don't know the answer. So I'm writing a brysa. I'm going to tell you something that I do know. I know that if you have a spine without ribs, tar. What about a spine with ribs? I don't know. You don't tell me that based on what I wrote, you could infer that if it has ribs, it's tar. I don't know the answer myself. So I'm not writing it. I'm not talking about that. Oops, wrong way. Uh, one day I'll get used to this. Oh, I managed the wrong way. No, it is the right way. Here we go. I just, if you don't, if you didn't understand what I said, here it is. The, the Bryce says the thing in green. That's all it says. If you're missing uh, ribs, it's tar. Mashma, that if it's not missing ribs, it's tar. I mean, no, uh, that I don't know. If it's not, if it's not missing ribs, I don't know. So it's a suffix. Okay. Toshma. That you'll remain with the question. Toshma. If you don't remember, she should divide Rebbe Kiva and Tamim and Chachamim and Tamim. There's six things that there's a machlokes between Rebbe Kiva and Chachamim. The Chazal by Rebbe Kiva, Rebbe Kiva retracted all six. Umaisa sheviu kupa melea tzomis lebeis akneses shel tersim. Boys, I have to tell you the truth. I was this close to bringing a full live dead person. Like live meaning a real dead person. And then after I showed the video and, and it was a plastic doll going through a grinder that didn't become red when it went through, I got some uh, pushback. So I'm not going to bring a dead person then. Aww. I was just thinking about, you know, Nachman and Mendy sitting right next to the dead. Okay. I, I had to have Amina. It might still happen. Well, how do we bring that person to a grinder also? That's gonna, come on, that'd be me. Fine. Akaponim, you see here that in the time of Chachamim, they brought, they didn't forget the video, they brought a box of bones into the base medrash. Here, rabbis, what do you think about this? These were coppersmiths. I'm just thinking, Mamish, it could be the most balabatish, dump shot ever. They used to dig for copper, so maybe they found some bones. Found a bunch of bones and they brought the base measures. Well, I mean, like, who comes, in, who has bones? Why would the guy have, it says Tarsim, copper smiths, a bunch of them. Come into the base measures here. R- rabbis, what's going on here? Tell us, do we have, is this metama, not metama? Do we have most of the bones of us, one individual, not? What's going on here? It says in Shadowbay, because it was a place where people didn't come to. There was a basic, a Knesset that, there is, oh, there's actually a big need though. Are you allowed to bring a dead person into base marriage? Period. The Allah is you're not allowed to. And the Chacham Sadam is a whole thing that he brought the Vilna Gain into the shul and he, he, he said it's Mamish Asr, maybe the Vilna Gain was Yachabed Daira, you're allowed to, but you don't bring dead people into the shul, into base marriage. I think today they, they, they do. do. They, they bring do. like the, the Roshiva, the Rebbe, a certain very, you have to be very, very cautious. Uh-huh. Okay, listen, ask the local rabbi. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Listen what happened there. Rabbi, say, you hear what's going on? Imagine this uh, where it says eight minute dive in the ceiling. There's a sunroof. So if you put the dead person directly below an opening, like where you could do a chuppah, you know, some shuls have, you could open it up, so you do a chuppah. Then the tuma, the way it works is, it goes upwards and has a place to escape. So if it escapes through the opening, then it doesn't spread in the rest of the shul. So what I'm assuming is they told all the kohanim leave. They bring the dead person in. So as they bring the dead person in, there's oil, 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 until they bring the dead person directly below the skylight. And then it escapes through the skylight. Then the Koyhanim 
come into the base medrash and stand around and not, not over the mace, obviously. So there's no oil. V'nichu ba'aver. V'nichnas. Toydas ha'reifei v'chol ha'reifei mimoy. Came in the doctors to check it out. A doctor once asked Rabbi Yanka Golinsky, he said, tell me, Rebbe, what's the pshat in toiv she b'reifim l'gehenim? Why is the best doctors go to Gehenim? He said, listen, Tzadik, if they ever catch you like that up there, I'm going to be the first one to testify you're not a good doctor. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, v'amru, ein kan shidro memeis echad. So they passed in, they looked at all the bones, they assembled them, they made a skeleton, it's, it's, it's all far from the bones from different dead people. You don't have a spine that comes from one dead person. We want to be medayik, says the Gemara. It seems like it's because the, 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 the doctors passed in, listen, there's no, there's no spine from one dead. But if there was one mechada, one spine that came from one dead person, Seems like the Nazar would shave. You don't need both, a spine and a skull. All you need is a spine because the doctor said you don't even have a spine of one dead person. He didn't say you don't even have a spine and a skull of one person. All he said is you don't have a spine. Mashma, again, we're going to make the deal. Mashma, if there was a full spine from one dead person, Nazirim, who came in contact with it, either through oil, maga, whatever it is, would, would, have, to, uh, would have to shave their head. Shmamino, oishidro, Fine. No, they were saying, certainly there's not even a full skull. This is not a full skeleton. What they're saying, you don't even have a full spine. Don't be medayik from the doctors. What the doctors are trying to tell these people is don't worry about it. In terms of a full skeleton, you don't, you don't even have a full spine from one dead person. Not that it would pass it. You, you certainly don't have a full spine in a skull. You don't even have a full spine. Says the Gemara, Toshma, Miminyana. Let's look and count. So, you have over here like this. Sorry, it's one color, whatever. It was hard for me to change the colors. But I did the kitzer. In fact, if you look at number four, I don't know if you can read it, but it says Revius. Okay, there's not enough room in the boxes for me to write it the way I want. I wanted larger letters. Okay, so real quickly. Number one is Abram and Ames. These are the machloikis in between Rebbe Kiva and the, and the world. Abram and Ames, Abram Chai, Chatzikav, a Revius. How much is the Revius? There's two machlaikas in, by the way, in Revius. You remember the two machlaikas in? He's out cold. You see, it's only, I told you, it's the first five minutes. He's good. Afterwards, he goes to sleep. Yeah, you good? You know what the two machlaikas in of the Revius are? No. So I'll tell you. First of all, how much blood do you need? The machlaikas in, in the amount of blood. And also, if you take two vials of blood from two dead people, do they combine? But there's two machlaikas in, and how much blood do you need? Between Rebbe Kiva and the rest. Okay. Now, etzim kesayra, if it's split in, in half, is one machlekes, that's number five. What's number six and seven? Shidra and Gulgailus. Now we said there's only six machlekes in between Rebbe Kiva and the rest. If you separate and divide six and seven and make them two separate things, it's either a spine or a skull. Comes out that we have seven machlekes in, not six. So there's four answers to this. What are the four answers? The same exact answer. Once we remove one of the other things, then we have six. You can remain Shidra and Gugailus as two Machlaikasin, two individual Machlaikasin. If we take off the Machlaikas of Revius, Revius doesn't count as a Machlaikas, boom, we'll have six. We take off the Machlaikas of Etzim Kesaira, we'll have six. Great. Let's see how that works. Toshma Miminyana. Just count. Umahain, Shisha Dvarm, Shiva Kivim, Matam, Chacham, Matarim. What are the six things that Rabbi Kiva says are Talmud Chacham Zetar? Alev Rimena Meis Shabbat Mishnei Meisim. Number one is one limb that comes from two people. Imagine a half a leg, the upper half from one dead person, the bottom part from. Is it Mitzdar? Rabbi Kiva says yes, it's Mitam. Valev Rimena Chai Shabbat Mishnei Bini Adam. Same exact case, but a live person. Malchati Kav Atzal We're talking about Nazir here, right? 
you have a half a kav, usually it's a reva kav, over here because it's a nazir, it's half a kav, Shabbat Mishnei Mason. But I combine a box full of bones, a kav of a, a half a kav of bones from two dead people. Valravis have dam, habo mishnayim. So, a revis of blood. I want to stop here for a second because I thought it's a beautiful thing. I just, I chopped this morning. Yesterday, I went to this silver store. Now don't, this is not my taste, but I, uh, this is what they had and this is what I bought. I bought this, three of these. Why? For the Seder. Now, I'm, I'm just saying this as a side note because I said revis, I want to expl- talk about it. I heard a maggot cheer Give it shirin Arib Sachim, and I listened to him uh, the other day. He's great. He's unbelievable. On one and a half speed, it's, it's unbelievable. And he said, "I have a link. The, the link is you doing it, Jonathan? Not in Mir Hashem. You're doing it now. <laughs> you can catch up. It's still not a big deal. So the guy said there, the he's, he's very good, and I took his advice. He said that it's better to drink an entire cup of Revius than a giant cup of a Rive. I have a giant becher that my wife got me, and I fill it up, and I, and I drink rive. I can't drink, it's impossible, it's like a liter. I'm gonna drink a whole liter now? Drink rive. Says the Megachir, I guess he got it from somewhere, I don't know where he got it from, where did he get it from? It's better to drink a whole, so I went, I got the shir. This is a chazanish, you don't need the chazanish. The chazanish here is 150 samak, how do you say, I don't, milliliters. milliliters. And Reb Chaim Noah is 86. And how do you remember this? Kais and Kais Hagun, very good. Kais is 86, Kais Hagun equals 150. So this is about 150, 155, let's say. So if you drink this little tiny guy, it's better than drinking Rav Kais. Just wanted to bring it out, look over the say there. It's good. This is very small, trust me. And it's also narrow. So, but it, it's the Shia Chazanish, it's above and beyond necessary. So I have a bunch. This, I'm going to, I have a guest this year, the same guest I had last year. Reb Shlomo Lazarin Beis Hashem, so I got him one. Another, another. All right, he's he's up, he's up. I live in a mesh mosh nei kfei. Reb is down now. Valetzem kisoyro shenech like the If you have a tiny bone the size of barley, and it split down the middle, vahashidru val gogolus. Oh. So is Shidra and Gugolus one or two? If you count them as two, now you have seven, Machalik is not six, and that's a major problem. Dafnum Bezim with Bez sponsored, Atzlacha, of Ayyale bin Aliza Simcha. If you're learning Ari Psachim, well, I don't know if it's Ari Psachim, now I'm confused already. Maybe it's the beginning of Psachim. That's when we go into why there's a sponsor of turning, because people were upset that we call it turning of the Daf. It should be turning of the page. It was Machalik between the Charedim and the Modernishes and the, the this. The kids don't ask, so somebody came up with the idea. You pay for it, you get to call it whatever you want. Daf Yud Aleph. Here, the Baki, Daf Yud Aleph. And then Daf Tes Vav is the, like the first time that I go, Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Ah! Like I let out a little bit of a kreft. I don't know if it, we're, we're trying to figure out where that Meshagah started from. Okay. No, you did the major one, the six second one. Yeah, I don't remember. Okay, it wasn't in Psachim. Vizok at the Hishidro Gugos. Hani Shiva Havion, Asta Gamari, we have seven. Kikotani, Simon. Oh, I didn't say it. At Slochov, are you late? And Eliza Simcha, Shaina Masha. And Eliza Simcha, Shaina Masha, Bad Bracha. Let's talk about the Makachir, the members of the HPA group and their families are main. That was not good. Simon. Four tirutim that are basically the same exact thing. Rabbis, don't worry. We got to get rid of. Let's go here. Check this out, Rabbis. I'm very proud of myself because Yoshi taught this to me the other day and I used it already. Check out number five. Wow. Yeah, it's amazing, no? Ah. Uh, I finally learned how to do that. So if you get rid of number five, how many do we have left? Six, everything's great. Let's get rid of number five. Why do we get rid of number five? Because that's in Kisaira, is Yachad to the Polygalate. There's only a single individual that fight, that's fighting with Rebbe Kiva. Nobody can match up with Rebbe Kiva. The greatest Tana that ever lived, possibly the greatest human being that ever lived. It's one against one. We don't even count the Desanyo, Edson Kisaira, Shanakal Shnayim, Rebbe Kiva Metamo, Rebbe Yechon, that was my own shot. I don't know if that's the real shot, but okay. 
It's only Rebbe Chanan that argues with him. Fine. We buy him another pshat. Kik katani every minah mace. Every minah chay loy katani. Here, check out the board. Boom. Every minah chay goes. Every minah chay goes. You got six. Why? I mean, chay loy katani. It's basically the same thing. Aver, aver. It's the same. What are you going to count it twice? It's a limb, dead, alive. Okay. We buy same kik katani kalecha the nazi megalech ala hiloy. We're talking about oil over here. Rabbi Sai, from the entire list, what doesn't create oil a mace? That's him, Kisa. Oira, bye bye. Now we have six. We're only talking about the things that Rabbi Akiva retracted. La Puke reveals dam. The loyal darbe goes, reveals away. He never took it back. Don't put that in the list of things that Rebbe Kiva retracted. Always. Huh? What did I say? Yeah. What do you have? Okay. Okay, this is based on, on something serious. Limudai, Tamudai, Shereb In other words, Rebbe Kiva in his entire life always mentioned Revi's Dam and never took it back. Void, Amikr Messiah. Remember, we learned when we had the beautiful picture, I should have put in there where it was animated. Two vials of blood go to that rich guy sitting under uh, in a house. Two vials from two dead people. It, it's, it goes together. Why? Because the Pasuk says over there, Valkal Nafshais Mace. Plural, two Nafashis. Reb Shimon Oimer, listen to this, Rabbi. This is very, very important to pay attention to every word here. Reb Shimon Oimer, who is Reb Shimon? Reb Shimon Bayechai. Ad Yom of Hoya Matamer. Reb Shimon Bayechai is Reb Akiva's Talmud. Listen what he said and listen how bad it came out. Ad Yom of Hoya When he was still alive, Reb Akiva said that it reveals that the blood of two dead people combines. I don't know if my Rebbe, Reb Akiva, once he died, took it back which is a terrible thing to say. It's not a nice thing to say about your Rebbe. In other words, my Rebbe made a mistake. He died thinking the wrong thing. I hope he retracted once he's dead. That's how you talk about Rebbe Kiva. says, Gemara, Tana, Hushchur, Shinov, Bepnei, Tani, Yosef. Rebbe Shem Ba'ichai fasted so many fasts because I fasted a few times in my life. And after Yom Kippur, my, my teeth don't turn black. If his teeth turn black, Rebbe Shem Ba'ichai's teeth turn black means says, Tysus and El Yusha, he fasted so many fasts on that one line that he said. How much we have to be careful of our words and how we say them. Now, in the Shulchan Aruch it says that Yom Kippur is not mechaper if you embarrass somebody. If somebody, you embarrass somebody, you have to go ask him mechila. What happens if that person dies? You have to go ask him mechila by his caver. But the Paiskim, like the Mogan Avram, the Balatanya, the Mishabura, they all bring that that applies only to somebody who died after you insulted him. So you have to go to his caver. But if you insulted, like in this case, Rebbe Kiva, after Rebbe Kiva was already dead, he was already nifter. So you could just ask him a and do and do tshuva like that. You didn't go to his, cave, his grave. Just want to point out that if the Rambam doesn't have a, a certain halacha, it says this halacha in the Gemara, and it doesn't bring it down. What happens? All the Noisa Kalim talk and talk. Why did the Rambam, why was he mashmidid and how, what's going on here? Nobody ever thought for a second that the Rambam made a mistake, that he forgot something. Nobody. <coughs> so Kavachoymer, Allah is Kavachoymer, Allah is Kavachama, Rabbi Shalom also doesn't forget anything. Some people, oh, he forgot about me. He, he wasn't paying attention. No. If the Rambam didn't forget, because Baruch didn't forget, and we have to be careful how we speak about Gedoyal. Fine. I saw, I don't know if it was Ashgah, I just saw a story yesterday. It's a mud and mice. Some of you are not going to like it at all. But I thought it was a cool thing I just saw yesterday that a couple was about to get married and all they were able to scratch together was $40,000. They went to Rav Shteman and they asked him, what should we do to $40,000? He says, buy an apartment here in Bnei Brak. Bnei Brak, apartment cost, I don't know, how much does an apartment cost there? Over half a million dollars for sure. What are you going to do with $40,000? But the Godel said, so fine. So they call up the broker. We want an apartment for $40,000. The guy, he hung up, la- Mamish left. Call the next, fine. Then they get a phone call. They say, listen, there's, there's an old man who's, who's masking him to sell you the apartment for $40,000. 
on condition he gets to live with you until he dies. But the sad part of the story is that the old man died right before the wedding. And he got the apartment for $40,000. But anyways, it's, uh, listening to Chachamim. Fine. Tashma. I don't know if the guy killed him in the story or whatever. Fine. The story would have been nice without that. <laughs> listen to the G'daylam. Stefansi, listen to the Bnei Brak, you're right. Property in Bnei Brak. That's why it resonated with me. I chap. Very good, very good. Tashma, Sanya, Beisham, Ayoyimim. Who says this? Rabbi Isai, don't get confused there. There's two names that we're going to have here. Beis Shammai and Shammai. Beis Shammai are the Talmidim. Roi Vatzomim, Simen Atzomim. When we talk about the, 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 the majority of the bones, it's from all the bones. Oi Mishnaim, Oi Mishloisha. So just to explain Tysus here, it's not confusing at all, but it could be confusing. This I need Dr. Factor. Wake him up, please. I need you here, Tzadik. Okay, good. We have the, the femur. And the tibula, I don't know, whatever. The, the, the fibula, the fibula. The, the, I confused the two. The fibula, right? So, Tysus explains, what's two or three? There's no such thing in the Gemara. Two or three, it's three. What's two? If it's two, then you, two bones is enough. Three. So it goes like this. If you have one femur and two of those little guys in the bottom, you see how small they are? Two of them don't even equal, the two bottom ones don't even equal one upper one. So Memela says, Tysus is a little counterintuitive. One upper one and two bottom ones are the shear, but the Gemara calls them two. Why? Because it's one upper bone and one lower bone. You hear? It's three bones, but we count them as two. We were counting, here, look like this. One and two. I don't count this, oh, oh, there's a, there's a separation there, it's three. No, one and two. However, says Tysus, if you go like this, one, two, and one single guy from the bottom, that's already called three. Why? Because I'm using three separate types of bones. One, two, three. Okay, it's confusing? He's like a side dish, not a main. The Gemara says two and three. This explains beautifully. One and two. That's enough to make a rave. Meaning, one here and two of these guys. Or... That the Gemara calls two. Why? Because it's only one and two. So it's two. But when you're counting one, two, plus one down here, that the Gemara calls three. Two large ones, one small one is three. Okay. You didn't understand it. Look at the picture. It's very it's self-explanatory. But it doesn't matter for the sugya. It really doesn't. It's a side point. Most of the body. Now the Gemara is going to explain what's going on here. There's no machlokes, he says. Why? Either two of these and one down here, or down here and this. Fine. Why? This is considered most of the height of the human being. So that's enough to be metama. And all Basil are doing, they're not arguing, they're adding. They're saying, you're right, Roy Binyan. But you know what else is metama? Most of the count. How many bones are there in a body? 248. So 125 is the Roy. Some of us are not going to like this. Tysus says that every hand has 30 bones, every foot has 30 bones. Science says a little different, 27, 28, whatever. But Tysus, it doesn't, that's really not important to the Tysus Pshat. Because if you do 4 times 30, 2 times 30 is how much? 60. Times 2 is 120. That's how part of it, how we do the math. 4 times 30 is 120. That's very close to 125, which is most of the bones. This is Tysus. All you need is two hands, two feet, and a couple of other bones, and you already have the roiv. Oh. Shammai Oimer, all of a sudden comes Shammai. Not Bei Shammai, the Rebbe himself. Afilu etzem mina shidra, even one bone from a spine, one, one of these vertebrae. And listen to this Lashen, very, very important. Oi, or mina gilgoylas. The whole question we have today is, is it both the spine and the skull? And all of a sudden over here, he sticks in the word either or, not even a whole skull. One of the many bones that comprise the skull, one of the vertebrae. 
So the Gemara wants to learn from here, if Shama is talking about one bone from the skull, or, or one bone from the spine, then those who argue on him hold the entire spine or the entire skull. It's too far away to say, no, they meant a skull and, a, and the entire spine. Says Gemara, no. Shani, Shami the Machmer. He's super Machmer. So he means one bone from either or, but everybody else holds you need a full skull and a full spine. So says Gemara, Lush, mean, no. Time to be Shami the Machmer. Shama uses the word, you have to stick this in in Pshat over here. Shama uses the word Oi. Because they want to show, well, that's, that's really the Gemara's terrorist. But since Chachamim don't use the word Oi, so they, Lechaira, mean that you need both. Here, Shama used the word Oi. Oi means or. Either one bone from the skull or one bone from the spine. Chachamim never used that word Oi. So let's use that as a deal that you need both. You need the skull and the spine. Says Gemara. Loy. At can loy pligi rabbanon alay the shama yellow beetsa mecho dosi mina shidro mina gagoilos. So you, it, it doesn't say it in the words, but this is how the Rishonim explain. Aval hechad is it beene afilu chadam in hoin. What's going on here? Since shama is so super machmer, he's on the extreme of the extreme. One tiny bone from a skull is equal like. 125 bones of the body, like the roiv. He's super machmer, because the skull is so important. The spine is so important, all you need is one bone. Therefore, he had a stick in the word oi. Because if he didn't say the word oi or, I wouldn't understand what he's saying. I wouldn't believe that he was so machmer. So he said, listen, I'm so machmer, it's either one bone from the skull or one bone from the spine. Don't even think for a second, what I meant is two bones, one from here, one from here. I'm so machmer. But chachamim, we're not machmer. They didn't have to use the word I. You're trying to be medayik. Oh, they didn't use the word or. So that means they actually require both the skull and the spine. No. Chacham didn't feel it necessary to use the word or because they're not so machmer. Shammai, who was very machmer, he had to use the word or. So there's no proof at all. Bottom line is, we don't know. In order to be Talmud, do you need a skull and a spine? Or it's either or. Rabbi Isai, have a wonderful day.